Hello everyone. Welcome to new episode of Legal Vidya. Today we have Mr. Mridul Gupta, a practicing advocate at the Chambers of Sujit Ghosh. He has joined us to discuss an interesting topic, the scope of practice in energy laws. To give you a brief about energy laws, energy law is a new area of law compared to other branches of law. To regulate this, Electricity Act 2003 was brought into place. which consolidated all the laws relating to generation transmission distribution electricity electricity supply trading and use of power and electricity and also taken measures for the development of electricity industry so when it comes to the practice of energy laws one may think that what are the legal matters involved under electricity laws and to answer this we have mr mridul an advocate practicing in electricity laws for the past 5 years in the supreme court delhi high court appellate tribunal for electricity and electricity commission across india so before we begin i would like to thank you mridul for accepting my invitation on a very short notice a very warm welcome to you i hope our conversation would be fruitful to all the young lawyers who want to have exposure to this new area of practice thank you thank you so much for extending the invitation with this let's begin our conversation So shall we start? Yes, please. Yes. So my very first question: Can you please explain to our viewers what is electricity law? What is the scope of electricity law, and how did you enter into this area of law? So electricity law uh, is a collection of a lot of regulations along with the statute called Indian Electricity Act two thousand three. so uh, what this electricity act did it <coughs> so it unbundled the various activities involved in generation and transmission of electricity why do i say unbundling so previously there were two uh, two other acts electricity act of 1910 then there was electricity act of 1948 what these two electricity acts entail was so the process of generation of electricity transmission and distribution everything was controlled by the government of india even though there were independent power pro- producers everything was l- under the license raj you need to obtain license for each and everything when electricity act came in it unbundled it first thing it did was to do away with the license when it comes to generation of electricity so when any company or any individual is generating electricity it need not need any license for it so uh, when i say laws it includes regulations pa- uh, regulations passed by various electricity commissions so electricity act did another thing it made various state commissions so in order to regulate electricity in various state because electricity is a concurrent less subject so both state and center can make laws so every state was given autonomy to control electricity uh, under its state that is intra state supply so every state has its commission so every commission passes its new regulations how the electricity will be regulated in its in its state that is why amalgam of all these regulations red with electricity act is called electricity laws so this is just the basics of the electricity laws here how did i venture into electricity laws the practice of electricity laws is a very interesting story so uh, when i was graduating from college one of uh, my seniors was in house counsel in a company by the name amplus energy solutions so i was in touch with a lot of seniors there was an opening in the company uh, he contacted me that uh, if you are interested we have a, a fresher position in our company i said okay fine i'll give the interview and luckily i was selected and my career began as a legal advisor in amplus energy solutions where why i was advising on various electricity laws and doing general corporate work but i was interested in the litigation side of it so after working for some time at amplus energy solutions i ventured into a law firm which was doing 
practice in uh, electricity laws only. Okay. So this is my brief story. How did I venture into electricity laws? So thank you for providing a detailed explanation to what is electricity law and letting us know how you entered into this area of law. And I'm sure this is a very technical subject. So how did you manage to understand the nuance of the subject? Because uh, so have you studied the electricity laws during your college? Uh, uh... Unfortunately, I did not read electricity laws in college because our college do offer a course in uh, with specialization in electricity or power, but I, uh, sorry, energy laws, but I enrolled for a different course in college. I was interacting with a lot of students who were specializing in energy laws, but I never got a chance to read electricity act. So when I, uh, reached Amplus Energy Solutions. It was the first time when I was reading the Electricity Act. And it is very, very technical act because it entails a very, very, uh, I mean, specific uh, measurements of electricity, other very technical subjects. It, so I'll give you, just, just to briefly tell you, this Electricity Laws of India is not developed by the lawyers themselves or the legislature. It is developed by the electricity engineers. So electrical engineers are the ones who, uh, I mean, 90% drafted these legislations, these regulations, these the Electricity Act is 90% input is from the electrical engineers, not from the legislators. So yes, it is very, very technical. You need to read electricity laws multiple times in order to get a hang of it. But if you get the larger framework, which I will entail later on, mm -hmm. you will get a hang of it, like how the electricity act works. So it must be very challenging for you, right? Okay, so right now you were talking about that uh, you're practicing in electricity litigation and how you enter into this litigation. So can you tell us what types of cases do you deal with when it comes to electricity litigation cases? So, uh, Electricity litigation is uh, divided into three aspects, okay. majorly. It has other aspects as well, but majorly three. One being from the side of the independent power producer, the uh, entity which generates the electricity. Second is the distributor or the distribution companies or the discoms. That is the entity which is involved in distribution of the electricity. Third is the transmission utility, which is involved in transmission of electricity. Now, when one starts reading the Electricity Act, the first thing the person gets confused is what is the difference between distribution and transmission? So I'll not go into that. So that is, and then the fourth aspect is obviously the consumer. So uh, in my practice, I mostly represent the independent power producers. I have some uh, experience for the commission as well, but I majorly focus on the independent power producers. So with the help of example, can you please explain to our viewers how this process works and who are these independent bodies and discoms or how the distribution works and how does this problem arise? It would be very helpful for us to know because it's a very new area yes. and, and seriously, we don't know about this particular area. <laughs> Yes, indeed, indeed. So uh, I'll first start by the independent power producers. Yes. So power can be produced by multiple processes. One is burning coal, burning oil, use of gas, hydroelectricity, biogas, solar, wind. So these are some of the examples how energy is developed, I'm sorry, produced. So an independent power producer is an entity which utilizes any of the earlier highlighted processes and produces electricity. After production of electricity, next thing comes into the picture is transmission and distribution of this electricity. If you cannot transmit this electricity, how the consumer will benefit from it. Now the consumer can be household consumer, which are us. And the second category is industrial consumer and third is commercial consumer. So industrial consumer are the factories basically. So any factory which is using electricity comes under the garb of industrial consumer. 
then there are commercial consumers who are commercial consumers one if you see any commercial complex like uh, that in D, like dlf cyber city the whole city is uh, full of commercial buildings so those are commercial consumers why there is a distinction distinction is because the tariff charged for supply of each unit of electricity is different for each categorized consumer yeah. so like Now, for independent consumers, power independent for commercial entities yes yes. yes yes it is different for different entities now once the electricity is produced it can be purchased directly by the consumer or by the distribution companies for the purpose of distribution and consumption how this uh, sale works so the independent power producer and whosoever is the consumer enters into a document called the power purchase agreement okay ultimately this is the power purchase agreement is the mother document through which everything functions now there are other power sale agreements and etc so these are background agreements but the primary agreement is the power purchase agreement so all the disputes 99% of the disputes for an independent power producer arises from the power purchase agreement so the the litigation of electricity is primarily a con- commercial dispute ultimately because it involves a huge sum of flow of money so it's a commercial litigation now coming to distribution side so distributors are uh, the government owned entities who lay down the electricity lines in the city area basically to distribute electricity to the consumers if i just briefly tell you who are the uh, transmission utilities if you have ever traveled on the road or uh, via train you must have seen huge huge uh, uh, towers which have huge wires correct correct near the near, near the fields the open fields where there, there are no buildings so when you see those structures those are basically transmission lines so those transmission lines are transmitting electricity from one place to another distribution entities are distributing the transmitted electricity into the homes or the places of the consumers okay so thank you for providing us this insightful and uh, detailed explanation how this process work one more thing i wanted to ask so like you were mentioning about the government involvement so apart from the government yes, involvement yes. there is a private players also who get involved in when the transmission of electricity comes into picture so hmm. it's the government plus so private entity both works together or is entirely the government who is handling over this thing see uh, when it comes to the uh, production of power it's all the private entities okay it's all the private entity which is uh, involved in the power production okay so uh, no government involvement there are certain entities which uh, produce power as well because uh, production of power is de licensed if i want to see if i want to open a startup tomorrow i say that i will put in the wind farms in the areas and i will produce electricity i am free to do so i de- need not to obtain any license from the government for this generation activity but when it comes to distribution i need to obtain a license from the government that yes i am the dis- i will be a distribution entity i am laying down the electricity lines or the infrastructure for the flow of electricity so i need a license for that same is for the case of transmission utilities mm-hmm. okay so now uh, this is the procedure you have explained us but now what is the legal problems you deal with so what are the legal problems associated with this particular energy laws which you are dealing right mm-hmm. now yes so i deal with something called as the uh, breach of the power purchase agreement now power purchase agreement is mostly dealing with the tariff regulation whether the tariff is being paid uh, on time uh, what is the tariff applicable a very uh, 
one very particular aspect of electricity or regulatory litigation is which is very specific to this sector it is called the change in law now what is change in law so this this also deals with very one particular format of electricity uh, agreements where which is the government tender agreements so what the government does it when i say government it's 99% of the cases is state government state government has certain obligations to pertain certain set of units from the renewable sources and it all, in addition to that it also needs to run the state the power supply so what it does is it floats tenders that we need x amount of electricity any independent power produ producer can participate and the tariff which will be applicable upon which the electricity will be sold to the government is discovered through a bidding process now when the bidding takes place the entity which is bidding for the tariff or quoting the tariff takes into consideration what laws are prevailing at the time of bid submission laws related to import export the rate of tax is applicable on the various uh, goods and services etc after when the bid is submitted the tariff is discovered if there is a change in law let's say a revision in rate of tax is applicable on goods and services what it will do is during the execution of the pro project and our post execution of the project it will is will increase the cost of project okay. and the only source of revenue for this project is the tariff which is coming in so i have an x amount which i have uh, calculated keeping into consideration the laws applicable as on date i am saying if i quote this particular tariff after x number of years i will have the once thank you yes so the only source of revenue for the project is the tariff which will be coming in so again going back to the example i have a x amount which i will require as investment from my side to set up the project i will have y as my tariff and over time let's say the power purchase is agreement for 20 years 25 years and over the period of 25 years i will recover the cost of the project with some profit mm -hmm. but this is dependent upon the the laws applicable as on date of the bidding if the rate of taxes are re revised post submission of the bid my project cost has increased but the tariff has not so this leads to violation of my right and i go before the electricity commission in the state and say boss law has changed after the date of bidding so you revise my tariff accordingly so this is 90% of the litigation as on date when it comes to regulatory sector that is change in law litigation how it happened when the gst act was introduced mm -hmm. so gst act changed the rate of goods and supply on various uh, goods and services required for execution of a project so change in law litigation is one of huge chunk of litigation that goes on now for the purposes of better understanding i'll briefly explain the skeleton of the regulatory sector of india when it comes to electricity so imagine three triangles first triangle is the independent power producers second triangle is the distribution and third triangle is the consumption or the consumers so first triangle independent power producers when i say independent power producers independent of what independent of the government regulation i if i want to uh, be an independent power producer i can open a company i will arrange for a piece of land i will set up wind farm or solar power plant i'll start generating electricity i will contact the distributors boss i am producing electricity would you want to buy so first triangle is selling electricity to the second triangle the th second triangle is 
ultimately selling electricity to the third triangle so this is the basic framework so all these three when all these three triangles are connected with one another it is called what grid india uh, functions on a policy called one nation one grid so all the states in india are connected via the same grid that is the indian grid so if i want to get electricity from karnataka tomorrow sitting in delhi i may do so so this is the beauty of one nation and one grid now i can understand why this is very technical topic <laughs> Yes, so thank you for providing us such a very the like, wonderful explanation to understand how this procedure actually works, sir. So now uh, I have two sets of question. The first one is while dealing with the energy laws, what are the some common challenges uh, faced by the lawyers? First, second thing is what are the biggest challenges faced in the energy sector today, and what is the role of the government and private sector playing in this field? so if there is any current issues going on this particular energy sector you can discuss that particular issues also uh so i'll start by what are the challenges faced by the advocates or the lawyers first thing is it is very very technical it is not like any statute you have read in college if you have not read electricity act in your college like i highlighted earlier it is 90% contributors from the engineers the electricity act mm -hmm. so in order to understand the technicalities of the electricity act somewhere down the line you have to get in touch with the engineers so when we enter the field we are connected to engineers like whether it is central utility discom we are we may represent anybody so but we have access to engineers so when it comes to technicalities or technical knowledge or i'll i'll just throw in two words one is ht second is lt okay ht when it comes to electricity act is high tension okay. and lt is low tension now what is tension here tension the strength of the wire no we are talking about the voltage of the electricity so this so this is something very new to me this was sorry very new to me so this will be new to anybody who is entering the field if he or she does not have a electrical engineering background so you have to read it over and over again you will have to sit with some engineer to ultimately understand or if you are very very accustomed to using google or any other search engine or you are very accustomed to learning from youtube you may very well do so because there are huge number of lectures available which make the terminologies and the processes very easy to understand now coming on to the major problem faced by the sector altogether is the financial viability financial viability for both the power developers as well as power produ uh, power purchasers so if you go and read about if you want to read about, read about the major problem faced by the distribution companies is something called as regulatory asset regulatory asset is nothing but the uh, amount of losses which a distribution company is under and it is not able to recover it from the general clients for the fact that the tariff will be huge if i am paying 4 rupees for your unit if uh, the distribution companies come and and want to recover this regulatory asset the losses the tariff might go might go as high as 12 rupees 13 rupees a unit so this is the problem faced by the distribution companies now coming to power producers power producers challenge is if it is setting up a project and it is running for let's say 20 25 years the capital cost is very high the initial investment is very high and only source of recovering that capital cost is what the tariff so if the distribution companies for some reason some reason stop paying tariff which happens very often so this is also one of the litigation which happens 
they stop paying tariff for whatsoever reason right mm -hmm. so what am i doing like my capital is stuck i cannot do anything so financial viability is the biggest challenge being faced by all the three triangles involved in the electricity regulatory arena so adding to this would you like to deal with any current issues which is currently going on in this energy sector so uh, apart from uh, the change in law litigation or the general violations of the power purchase agreements or certain technical violations very interesting case or issue which is going on in india uh, is the issue related to the great indian bastard so it's a mix of environmental law <coughs> and electricity law environmental law how i will explain further in certain areas of rajasthan the land was allotted for development of electricity right so during the development phase one of the challenges which came up was whether the transmission lines for electricity should be laid overhead which is generally the case but what happened this bird by the name great indian bustard but for the purposes of ease i will say gib gib is a very special bird it finds it very difficult to see when it is flying it does not have a very good eyesight and it is also a very endangered species so if one is trying to lay overhead high transmission wires what these birds do they fly in they get stuck on the wire they get electrocuted and they die so this is a very uh, new issue and a very challenging issue which has come up what to do with the transmission lines if i cannot lay it overhead the next thing remains is going underground you one might say yeah going underground is a good option but ultimately you need to understand there is an ecosystem living below the land as well <laughs> and if i am trying to go underground with this very very high tension wires right i am destroying the ecosystem underground as well i'm if some uh, innocent uh, citizen or some innocent person living nearby tries to dig and get some water he or she might also die when encountering this very high tension wire so it is a very a uh, ping pongy situation which is going on in Rajasthan everybody is trying to resolve it but as of now it remains unresolved so we are also as our chamber is also working on it i cannot go into the specifics of it but yes this is the issue if one wants to read about it so now moving to our next question can you explain us about the few companies or organization working in this sector yes so i'll start by the independent power producers so if you want to know which are the entities or the companies involved in power, uh, power production one is ntpc second is acme third is renew fourth is amp plus which i was also a part of fifth uh, then there is clean clean energy where clean energy is a venture of hero future energies then there is azure so all these entities are the independent power producers then i come to distribution companies distribution companies is a company specific to a state uh, when it comes to delhi you might Uh, read about bses yamuna then when i go to uh, up there is this uttar pradesh power distribution company limited bihar has two that is north bihar then there is south bihar distribution company limited going to karnataka karnataka has four uh, one is bangalore electricity supply then there is chamundeshwari Uh, electricity supply company then there is hubli there is mysore so every state has an, may have one or may have multiple distribution companies when it comes to transmission there is a power grid transmission company then there is sterlite power nrsx so these are transmission utilities or transmission companies 
So these are some of the examples of the organizations involved. Okay. So moving on. So if if anyone want to develop or if anyone is having interest into this sector, how they can uh, like uh, skill themselves? What are the skills required to excel in this sector? How they should start from scratch? Uh? So uh, for the college student who may get interested in this sector, how he or she can uh, come into this field is so there are very many law firms. which are involved in litigation and they are constantly hunt for the interns so the best i mean process for learning this sector is is not through books one may apply for various law firms i want to give some names one is the pla advocates that is prasoon law advocates and solicitors then there is jyoti sagar associates tri legal is there then you have msa partners then you have Uh, SKV Associates. So all these are certain law firms which are uh, focusing on litigation in the regulatory sector. So you might reach out through their website. So they 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 I mean easily give internships because they do not expect anybody to be well versed with the sector from the college because most colleges do not have uh, provision for teaching electricity laws. So that's why. So. if anybody is interested or wants to come into this field these are some of the law firms i mean if you just simply give a google search you will come i mean 10 15 names will come mm-hmm. so it is very easy do your due diligence it is not very difficult Ap- apart from that there are very many as i highlighted in house companies all these companies which i highlighted those also offer internships so it's not that difficult entering into this field So one more thing. So you are into litigation. Apart from litigation, yes. what are the other opportunities available in this energy sector? Other opportunities, uh, in-house advisory first. Second, uh, consultancy. Consultancy is uh, it. It is offered by PwC also. So consultancy is all the all the big four offers consultancy related to electricity. Then there is. Uh, electricity mna that is mergers and acquisition very specific to independent power producers you may also uh, uh, apply for various positions which are offered by the commissions so this in delhi delhi electricity regulatory commissions constantly offers you have to give exams uh, for all this or it's uh, directly you can apply no 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 the, there are no exams so okay. you need to be following their website so they come up with various positions you may apply and if luck holds it you may get in so consultancy litigation advisory all three is available mna as well okay. so coming to my last question what advice you would like to give to someone who is interested in pursuing a career in energy laws and if anything else you would like to discuss about this particular uh, field you can also add on whosoever is interested i'll just start by saying that you just read about the structure of it don't go into the technicalities or i mean get hassled by the technical terms mentioned in the electricity act what you do is you make yourself comfortable with the broader structure like i highlighted the three triangles so what is something known as open access in the under the electricity act read about the national electricity policy just get the hang of the overall structure of how the regulatory field in electricity works instead of going into the technicalities of uh, what is 33 kb wire what 33 kb grid 420 kb grid so don't get get into the technicalities of this as of now just read and get accustomed to the overall structure what are the various commissions how the litigation goes forward like uh, when it comes to litigation and litigation starts in most of the states in front of the regulatory commissions if you are not satisfied you come to aptel if you are not satisfied not satisfied in aptel as well you go to the supreme court so this is the three prong structure of the litigation but in certain states like haryana there is a committee 
under the haryana regulations you start your litigation there before the committee then you come to the commission and it becomes a four step process so you just get a hang of the overall structure that's it just understand the basics the three four entities involved like the independent power producer distributor distributor transmitter etc the functions of the regulatory commission that's it don't go into the technicalities when you enter the field you interact with the professionals or interact with some engineers you will get to know so don't don't worry about it so for entering into this practice you have to read a lot and understand the very technical part of it yeah <laughs> ultimately you have to be well versed with the technical so yeah because even in colleges i don't think so ki most of the colleges are covering this particular law and for this you'll have to study on your own if you want to enter into this particular field yes that's a challenge and my opinion is uh, the colleges should get in touch with the practitioners because the practitioners are very well suited to teach this subject even somebody with 3 4 years of experience is much more suited rather than someone who is teaching the sector uh, theoretically i'm not throwing any shades it's just that this sector is very very technical if you do not have a very hands on experience it will be very difficult for you to answer the questions which come in like uh, the crossroads of environmental law and electricity law which i just highlighted when i was giving the examples of gib so Correct. if a uh, one if a person does not have a very hands on experience it won't be able to easy but he also need electricity like if the if one nation uh, is impacted by the supply of electricity the whole nation might fall in a day if you if i relate it to the recent war if one wants to say in the russia ukraine mm-hmm. what russia doing what is russia doing is it is targeting the uh, electricity generation units also which is affecting the electricity supply in the nation so if the electricity supply is disrupted the whole nation might fall so this is also one of the angles which someone who is just teaching theoretically may not may not see so that is my opinion Thank you so much for providing this wonderful insight on the subject matter. I hope our viewers would be very happy to know about this particular sector because very less uh, materials also available online. And uh, I hope this conversation would be providing a uh, all the information what the young lawyers are looking for for entering into this field. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for extending the invitation. It's a pleasure talking to you. as always thank you so much thank you so much